Okay, so uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis uh, announced that he wants $3.5 million in the Florida state budget to establish a civilian state civilian defense force, which would basically respond to emergencies, hurricanes, disasters, which Florida is, of course, prone to. Um, very quickly, the quote unquote left media, or at least the corporate portions of it, were all over this. CNN ran the headline, Ron DeSantis, uh, something along the lines of wants to establish a defense force answerable only to him. Uh, but Joy Reid, as you would expect, took the cake, calling it fascisty bananas. Um, so this is in spite of the fact that 22 other states, including California and New York, have civilian defense forces for that same purpose. Uh, so Sarah Silverman responded to Reid's tweet saying, you're a news organization, the truth matters. Why don't you read the article before you say something like this? Right, because and, Joy Reid posted a link to one of those inflammatory headlines. Right. Right. And Silverman assumed that she just took the headline without mm -hmm. looking into it. And that's right. why she posted which, it. Which I think if you know Joy Reid, I don't think that's a good assumption. What the truth is doesn't matter to Joy Reid. Well, that was her big mistake. That was a big mistake that Sarah Silverman made, is assuming that Joy Reid wanted to tell the truth and wanted to actually do the research. But anyway, I have, go ahead. I have no idea where she might have gotten that impression. Joy <laughs> Reid has certainly never indicated any intention to adhere to the truth in her quest for ratings and hold her spanking new primetime slot, her reward for lying about her old homophobic blog posts going to primetime uh, on the liberal network. Um, so, uh, you know, Silverman got pilloried as a racist, of course, because she criticized a black woman. Of course, uh, it, there's no universe in which she could have just criticized her on the merits. She has to be a racist. Um, so now Silverman responding to this, you can almost see her realizing the pickle she's gotten herself into over the last few years by trying to go woke. We can't even critique anyone in your own party without punishment. One of the hosts of The View was like, what hubris for Sarah Silverman to accuse a black woman of not reading. Oi, Jesus H, what the f I fucking, I surrender. Good grief. I don't want any trouble. I cannot believe I need to say this, but I did not criticize Joy Ann because she's black, but because she's a, a Harvard educated journalist with the responsibility ideally of showing the whole picture and not just a piece of a picture. All right. So that was her Mia culpa there. Um, the thing I find interesting about this um, and sort of especially sad about this is that Sarah Silverman pretty much gave her career to the woke people. Like mm -hmm. she yeah. was a very, very funny and mm -hmm. edgy comic until she decided she, she was one of she was one of the country's greatest comic talents yeah she was she was fantastic yeah, yeah. um you know that jesus is magic special my father's yeah, friend yeah. was staying with us and he was kind of a he he, he was this, this nomad type who lived in his van so he never had a tv so he never got to consume any pop culture and he came and he stayed with us for a few months and he watched that special on a loop for like weeks because he finally had a television and he could watch something and that's all they wanted to watch. She was great until she decided that she didn't want to do, you know, politically incorrect humor anymore until she got in touch with her, you know, white privilege and decided that none of that edgy material was funny anymore. And so she just kind of stopped doing it. And, um, you know, she really has not been a very relevant comic since she decided uh, to sort of sanitize her act in that way. Because one of the things that made her act work is that she is this like high pitched, almost childlike presence on stage, right? This like short, pretty little Jewish girl with a high pitched voice saying all of this, like extremely, whether it's like vulgar, scatological or sexual stuff, or like very, very um, edgy, like, you know, politically incorrect material and then once she decided to just kind of i don't know make her set a pg-13 set that was it she really hasn't been a very funny comic since and her least favorite bit of all 
I, I should say, my least favorite bit of hers was her duo with Al Franken on the stage at the DNC in 2016, calling the Bernie supporters ridiculous for having a problem with the way that primary ha- had gone. That was really a low point in her comedy career. Yeah, uh, she did. She she didn't get any laughs in that bit, as I recall. No bomb. Only, Total only bomb. To- Total totally bomb. bombed. Totally failed <laughs> at the DNC convention. Um, yeah, all of these comics, except for Chappelle, who you can see the shit that he takes. Um, all of them have basically backed out. You know, and and they're not. I, I don't even. God, the the only the only comics I see who are still funny, I they get labeled right wing, but I don't. I just don't know what that means anymore. I, I just don't know what it means anymore. Like doing the same kind of comedy that. So what comedy has been since Lenny Bruce, you know, challenging convention, making people uncomfortable, poking at sore spots, comedy like that. Now they call it right wing. Because there, there's such a list as such a panoply of things that you're not allowed to say. I mean, basically, if you're going to impose a standard where if anyone's feelings are hurt or anyone is offended, then it's not good comedy. Well, that's the end of comedy. And, and we've seen it. I, one of the things I loved when Chappelle was responding that he would sit down and meet with uh, transgender activists but he, he listed his kind of humorous conditions. And one of them was to admit that Hannah Gadsby isn't funny. And, right, right, right. And, that, and that's a great example. Look, you had all these think pieces and articles about how this is the future of comedy. It's not the future of comedy if nobody thinks it's funny. Who the fuck do you know who is like, wow, I can't wait for the next Hannah Gadsby special. Who, who, who? So <laughs> this is not right. the future of comedy. It's the future of comedy for six woke people who all work for Vox, but it's not the future of comedy for anybody else. Yeah, when your audience is a cohort of the population that is pretty much devoted to not having a sense of humor, it's hard to be a comic and cater to that audience. Like, their flagship characteristic is that they are humorless, and they're proud of the fact that they have no sense of humor. (laughs) It's like trying to crack up the Politburo. Right, exactly. I mean, what 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 can you do? I mean, so, you know, as as you pointed out in that clip there, she did kind of realize the corner that she kind of backed herself into, you know, and, um, you know, she just says, well, you know what? So we can't criticize our own party anymore. What? It's like, you know, this is just dawning on you now. Welcome, Sarah. (laughs) Exactly. Because she fell in line, you know, in 2016. You know, she 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 was a Bernie surrogate, uh, one of the most high profile ones. And, you know, she she pretty much towed the line since then um, and hasn't ruffled too many feathers since then. Not in terms of her activism or her comedy act. Um, And the second the second you step out of line the second you cross them yeah you know yep. you just well, get well, shit for it and she's got 12 million twitter followers so she has a huge audience so everything she tweets out really spreads far and wide and so you put a tweet like that out a very benign criticism of joy reed and i do want to go back to what i just said earlier at the very beginning of this uh, segment here um her mistake was assuming that Joy Reid didn't read the article and just made the innocent mistake of assuming that Ron DeSantis was sort of like building an army of brown shirts. <laughs> when, she gave her way too much benefit of the doubt. Right. It's very likely that Joy and Reid uh, either read the article or knew what the substance of the story was and decided to make her fascisty bananas tweet anyway. Right. So um, if I had to bet, I would say that that's probably what happened. I mean, she's a primetime news anchor. W- what do you think? She, she, she's not like one of us who just, you know, has a neat. I mean, I make sure I read an article before I tweet it out. You know, we got what, 1200 followers. <laughs> I mean, this is a this is a primetime news anchor who does this for a living all day, every day, 12 hours a day. Mm-hmm. You don't think she had some idea that this wasn't what she was trying to portray it as this is the network Shit. that 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 uh, um went uh, literally one day 
without mentioning Robert Mueller by name from the day <laughs> Donald Trump won the election until the Mueller report was published. One day, literally one yeah. day out of the how many, what, a thousand days, whatever it was, um, without mentioning Robert Mueller by, by name. And that day, I forget what it was, but it was obviously a day where there was some huge story that was just round the clock coverage. Right. So right. is this a, is this an organization whose anchors are what? Uh, devoted to the truth. I mean, you know, Silverman, we just saw a, a portion of what she said, but she's like, you know, you have to be accurate. You have to uncover the facts of every story. Is this a media that gives a shit about that? Of course not. Of course not. Where the hell have you been? Right. Right. Well, really, somebody like Joanne Reed, you think of them as a as a journalist, you're, re you're really looking at the wrong model. This is a carnival barker. This is this is somebody who says, oh, oh, Let's plant a story in the press about the two-headed goat. We'll get a huge line right. yeah, exactly. around the tent tomorrow. That's what she is. She's not a news person. None of these people are news people. They're they're uh, they're 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 uh, show people. They're show people trying to promote a show. That that's all. Well, the they way you know, said it, they know, was right. they know what brings in back. the rubes. Right. Oh yeah, they'll line up for the lobster boy. That, that's that's all this shit is. That's so. To, to even to even speak to her as if she's some kind of a news person, Sarah's the Sarah's missing the point. She's missing the whole point of Joy Reid's career. She, she's Har she's a Harvard educated journalist. Um, she knows exactly what she's doing. Same thing with Maddow. Maddow's a Rhodes scholar. They know exactly what they're doing, and what they're right. doing is promoting themselves. They're they're in it. They're in it for the money. They're in it for the status. They're in it for the prestige. I'm sure they comfort themselves at night by saying they're doing the Lord's work by going after Republicans. That that's how they justify their behavior. Uh, perhaps, yeah. But you know what 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 Silverman did there was you know she suggested that Joy Ann Reed had not read the article, and the crux of the backlash that she got was that, I mean. Like, Oy vey, as she said, <laughs> suggesting that a black woman didn't read is racist. Yeah, that's right? exactly what she was saying. Right. That's what she's saying. Could, that black people can't that read. Race, right. Of course, that's the angle she had on that. Of course. She but did. Um, she wouldn't what, have if, said if that she had to, made a to a white anchor at all. No, only a black anchor. She would have said that. Too. Right. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, look, if she had the right critique, the accurate critique of Joy Ann Reed and had said, you know, um, it's it's really a shame that a, a Harvard educated journalist who has a prime time slot on one of the three major cable news networks uh, would be this deceptive um, in their coverage of the news. She probably wouldn't have got that backlash because there's no there's no possible um, angle from which you could say that that is trafficking in any sort of coded racialized uh, if you're uh, debate with one of these people well they i mean perhaps they, they, they're i mean they're, you're right they could probably find their something ability to perform cirque du soleil level mental gymnastics to find what they're looking for is is truly a marvel to behold all right well here do you want to role play a little bit i'll put out all a right. fake i'll i'll quote a fake sarah silverman tweet uh -huh. and you tell me how that's racist Okay. Joy Ann Reed, Harvard educated journalist and uh, primetime host of one of the uh, top cable news shows in the nation, uh, obviously, um, you know, is uh, peddling a false narrative about the uh, civilian defense force that the Florida governor is uh, trying to fund. As soon as a black woman speaks her truth. There's a white woman trying to knock her down and deny her uh, reality. All right. I mean, as a valiant effort, but I still don't think that's as easy as her saying. It's, it's not as easy. It's no. not as easy. No. But I mean, you're 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 dealing with the grand inquisitors. There, there doesn't have to be any tangible evidence that you're a witch for them to accuse you of witchcraft. They'll they'll find the evidence if they really really are happening because really the crime that she committed here is defending Ron DeSantis. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, that's the real substance of it. Right. I mean, that's the real problem. Right. She's poking a hole in an attack on Ron DeSantis. And 
we're living in an age where you're either with us or against us. There's no room for nuance. There's there's no room for subtlety. Right. And look, dressing up as Hitler and going on Conan O'Brien uh, and playing Hitler as a Trump supporter is part of why people have that strong reaction to you defending or not even defending what Ron DeSantis is doing, but just like poking a hole in reporting that might give Ron DeSantis a bad name. Right. You know, I mean, well, she, she, she's she's trying to make an argument that I think a lot of reasonable people make when you make these kinds of dishonest arguments, you make things much easier for the right wing media because they're able to point at these patently false stories and say, see, fake news. See, you can't. There's a direct line between this kind of reporting and vaccine hesitancy. Because you're demonstrating them on an almost daily basis that you don't care what the facts are. So why are they going to trust you when you tell them they have to take a vaccine or that a vaccine is safe or well, that you have to wear masks? When I saw that headline that he was trying to put together a civilian military force, my eyebrows shot up a little bit. I'm like, whoa. You know, uh, that's pretty scary. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, you know, when you click the link and read the article, it's less so. But, you know, I mean, people's news feeds are, are flooded with this stuff. Not everybody clicks every story. You know what I mean? And um, and so, yeah, it is easy to um, misinform people with headlines. I mean, we are very, very careful when when we put out any headline, because if a headline right. is at all deceptive, um, not only do people not take you seriously, but also, you know, you can get a crack for disinformation if you put that in, there. you know, like I always I'm, to a fault because I don't want to be accused of like click baiting or fishing for clicks and stuff like that. Or I don't want to be accused of, you know, fake news. And so like I will sometimes water down a headline, you know, uh, in order to be as accurate as possible because you have to be succinct with these headlines, but you got to be eye catching, but you have to be, you have to be accurate. And so like given the crackdown on fake news, like why doesn't CNN get flagged for putting out a headline? DeSantis wants to create a civilian military force accountable only to him. Right. I mean, it's very right. obvious the message they're trying to send to the internet scrollers with that headline. Um, and that really has nothing to do with the substance yeah, of the gonna, story if you click it and read it. Through the middle of Tampa. Right, exactly. That's, that's very obviously what they're saying. I mean, it's completely mm-hmm. obvious what they're saying. Now, that's a more interesting and eye-catching headline than DeSantis wants to fund a backup civilian National Guard in case a hurricane you know, hits Miami. Right. Who's going to click on that? That's fucking boring. Right, right, you know? right. You know, and 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 so, you know, it 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 really I mean, this is a different topic, but it puts indie outlets at a major disadvantage because the corporate outlets like CNN and MSNBC can get away with putting up headlines like that and sure. they never get penalized for it. They, they Whereas if, 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 if an indie outlet put if, if we put out headlines that were that deceptive, we would get cracked down. They would say that we are Russian operatives spreading disinformation online. You know what I mean? And well, we would yeah, get suspended yeah, and we, well, we would get throttled. There's no there's no question about it. Uh, yeah, well, it's a it's a it's a complete double standard. Is it, I, I, I've never seen them crack down on anyone except the New York Post for a story that turned out to be true. The Hunter Biden story. Right. Yep. That yep. the only time they cracked down, they were wrong. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, uh, they hey. You were crazy. You were a racist if you believed that COVID came from a lab leak, right? Right, uh, right. You know, uh, so why you could have gotten they, in serious shit for saying that at the start yeah. of the pandemic? Now, yeah, 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 because yeah. there's such overwhelming evidence for that, they're a little but bit everyone, more lenient. Everyone who told you that was spreading misinformation. So where right. are the consequences? Right, exactly. Right. Where right. are the consequences for all these mainstream outlets that made it for both? to consider that possibility. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe wherever you saw it, on YouTube, on Rumble, or on Facebook. We have channels on all three of those platforms. 
Also, consider helping us create more content by becoming a member at patreon.com front slash do dissidents or on Facebook where you can become a supporter right through our Facebook page and get bonus content every week as well as call in access to our live stream shows. Thank you very much for your continued support.